Ever wondered how cute and harmless otters are? Well, think again. The otters in Wilds of Eldraine hit hard and viciously, as your opponents simply can't block them. Hey everyone, Hex here, and in the last video I wanted to win with a massive goose. Well, today I want to win with some ferocious otters in standard on the ladder. These games are fast and furious and ideal if you want to plow through games quickly. I'm super hyped for this new set, so if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below to not miss out on future videos and feel free to let me know if you have any synergies or combos that you want to see. As always, I really appreciate all your support for this channel. But onto this deck, and I'm looking to kind of win by turn 5, so we're all in on the aggro. Let's start with the two new creatures I'm featuring today, and they're both seemingly harmless otters. Firstly, my favourite new creature in the whole of Wilds of Eldraine, Elusive Otter. It's a humble 1-1 one, one for 1 that has prowess, and says creatures with power less than its power can't block it. Its adventure is an X green sorcery that allows you to distribute X plus 1 plus 1 counters among any number of target creatures you control. On the face of it, this creature isn't that much, but with the plethora of 1-1 one, one tokens, death touches, and of course shieldrids around, load this up with power pre-combat and attack straight through them. Trust me, this card is a massive must-answer threat for your opponents, and they might realize just too late. The other otter is not quite so devastating, but just as cute, it's Frolicking Familiar. It's a 3 mana 2 2 flyer that gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn when you cast an instant or sorcery that turn, and its adventure is a 1 red instant that does 1 damage to any target, effectively turning on prowess for the rest of your deck. Once this is on the battlefield though, its evasion can also get through blockers and help close out the games. Other creatures are Monastery Swift Spears, which work amazing in this deck, Storm Chaser Drakes, which help enable card draw, and I guess Kamano fits in this bracket too, as the 2 2s they eventually create can create create havoc for our opponents. You could try Ivy in this deck, but I had more luck when I didn't. I uh, felt it was just a bit too slow, but keep an eye out for a future Ivy deck that I'm making utilizing the Otters in a slightly different way. I'm keen to try out some new spells, so I'm using Royal Treatments to give our creatures Hexproof and create a Royal Royal attached to it, and Monstrous Rage which gives target creature plus two plus zero until end of turn and gives it a monster roll too. We've got Giant Growths and Stolen Vitalities to help boost our Otters pre-combat. Stolen Vitality worked pretty well on defense in in testing, enabling blocks on opposing shoulders out of nowhere uh, with the first strike it can enable. We've got some lightning strikes to inflict direct damage and some reckless impulses for some card draw, both enabling prowess. We've got just the 21 lands and that is the deck. There are countless other options you can try in this deck with Tyvar's Stand, Ivy, Iconoclast, Jaya, Audacity to Inferno, the list goes on and on. But I wanted to use some new cards today, so feel free to play whatever you feel is right for you. Anyway, let's Let's take a look at how explosive and how evasive these tiny little otters can get and how many games we can squeeze into such a small amount of time. All right, on the draw, with an awful hand. Um, yeah, we're gonna be shipping this one, unfortunately. If we had a red mana, maybe, maybe I would have kept it, but this is much better. Again, still need a red mana, but um, I think I think I'm going to bottom either Kamano or Lightning Strike here. Let's get rid of the Lightning Strike. Let's try and win with our Otter here. Opponent with Blossoming Sands, so that allows us to play our Otter here. And fingers crossed it survives a turn. As we find Shivan Reef, which is absolutely perfect. Okay, well, I think this is the op opportunity to play Kamano that will allow us to play Swift Spear next turn with a counter on it. That buffs our Otter and we take the opponent down to 18. So presumably they're on some kind of enchantment build here. There's Wedding Announcement. Elusive Otter is pretty much being designed, I think, to get around cards like uh, Wedding Announcement here. Any prowess triggers is going to make the Elusive Otter, Otter unblockable and because of that we are going to cast the Blow of Steam part of Frolicking Familiar, um, dealing one damage to any target. So we could hit the 1-1 here, but I just don't see the point as we're going to be attacking straight through it anyway, as the Elusive Otter is now an unblockable 2-2. Take the opponent down to 15. Having Royal Treatment in our hand is going to be amazing at protecting our Otter if there's an Otification, but down comes Lauren. And that's going to take care of our uh, Kumano. 
Royal Treatment does not give Hexproof to um, other permanents, just creatures. As long as we can keep drawing these uh, uh, spells that buff our power, we should be good. So we'll cast a Monstrous Rage here, targeting Elusive Otter. That's going to um, pump its power what, to a 5-3. That will get through um, Lauren, take the opponent down to 10. And if their tactic is just to keep playing Wedding Announcements or 1-1s, one we should have no problem here. And it is another Wedding Announcement, okay. So normally if we'd been casting these um, Monastery Swift Spears, obviously they'd be being blocked by these 1-1s. One so this is the exact reason I love this card, this Otter. It just feels so underwhelming as a 1-1, one -one, but in this particular situation, it's getting the job done. So, Wedding Announcement becomes Wedding Festivity. That does make Lauren a 3-2. We find a Lightning Strike. So we could uh, Lightning Strike Lauren, obviously, and just attack our opponent that way, but... Just going to go straight to the face, because this is going to um, buff our Otter to a 3-3, and then I'm just going to cast the Royal Treatment straight away on the Otter to make it a 4-4. Four -four. Obviously, the um, Aura is going to be replaced, but so be it. So it does have Hexproof to end of turn, but it has a Ward 1 now as well. So we'll attack our opponent. Can't block. They go down to 3. We don't strictly have lethal next turn, our hand as it is, but we have um, two flying creatures and a Haster in our hand. If we can find a way to um, buff our Otter, we win next turn anyway. And they scoop it up before that happens. Excellent. All right, on the play with a pretty nice hand here. We will drop our Otter on turn one as opposed to the Swift Spear, which can obviously have haste. The Otter needs a turn to stick around. Put it with a Spite Field Hex Mage. When it ETBs, pop a Cursed Roll onto one of their creatures. It has to go on itself. It is a 1-1. One -one. Okay, the land hasn't been too great for us here. But we will play our Swift Spear, and I guess we will uh, attack just with the Swift Spear. Pop our opponent down to 18. Opponent with a another Lamar Waste. We find a Kamano. Well, I'm going to cast the Reckless Impulse. Need a land drop. There's a land drop. There's a Giant Growth as well. Okay, this is a pretty nice uh, set of events here. Just shoot our otter, go to attacks. Get the opponent down to nine. And it is a, another swamp for them. And it is a two, three, tangle span lookout. Well, this is where the otter comes into itself. We're gonna just pump its power way beyond um, that that the opponent can deal with and uh, attack our opponent. And the otter has unblocked damage there. All right, on the play, a uh, couple of otters. We've got a perfect otter start here. So we'll keep this hand, even though we don't have any blue mana, there's enough in the deck to um, ensure that we do find uh, find something. I'm just gonna play the Kamano though, and we are gonna hope we find a blue mana next turn so that our otter comes down as a 2-2, and we would have the royal treatment in uh, on deck. And there we have it, an island. There is enough islands in the deck, I believe, so I was pretty confident we were always going to uh, find one. Put it with Dark Link Shores. So we'll play the Elusive Otter. It's a 2-2. Two -two. It does die to cut down, but obviously it has prowess, and we have royal treatment in our hand. So we'll always try and keep open a uh, green mana. I'm not going to play the Follicum Familiar's adventure side there and leave myself vulnerable. I guess with the other mountain we can uh, we can blow off some steam here and we can ensure that we just get an extra damage through from our elusive otter. So the otter's working in uh, tandem here. Now if they have a counter spell they can counter this otter completely and if they did have one they should have absolutely used it. But it goes down to 13 already. They find their third mana. So as it stands next turn we're just going to play 
Well, I'm not sure if we're going to play the Follicum Familiar as a creature or we'll once again blow us some steam to enable prowess. We find another royal treatment, which is cool. Let's go to attacks again, see what they want to do. Okay, I'm absolutely adamant they're going to try and destroy one of my creatures now. Okay, well, they go to damage. As we've passed priority and they are looking at our elusive otter here. Okay, it's Void Rend. Right, so we have Royal Treatment though, that is absolutely perfect on our Elusive Otter. And I guess we might as well blow off some steam here because we are going to be holding open the other Royal Treatment. The opponent goes down to 5. So this Elusive Otter has been fantastic in this particular game, even though they've got no creatures on the battlefield. But we'll see what they want to follow up with. It is a tap land, so we've kind of swerved any Shieldrids that the uh, opponent might have. Even if they had played a Shieldrid, apart from the life gain they would be getting, I think hopefully with these Follicum Familiars we have, we'd be able to um, eventually um, kill them over the top. But looks like a sign of resignation. They play a Staff of Completion. Looks like we've done too much damage too quickly, and the Royal Treatment is what probably has won us the game here along with the Elusive Otter. Alright, on the draw with a one land special, but we do have Elusive Otter, so that is a turn one play, and uh, we are instantly rewarded by drawing Yavimaya Coast for next turn. We will certainly be playing our Otter now, though. Opponent with an island, and... Uh, consider okay so we do need to find a red mana soon especially if they kill our otter they are having a good look at it harmless it is as a 1-1 they do pass the turn all right so i think what we're going to do play it safe we're just going to attack as a 1-1 i think this is the best option against our opponent here what if they do have something Okay, it is play with fire. I thought they might have a burn spell. I think if we're targeting our otter with uh, giant growth, they would have just uh, shot it in response. So I'm pretty happy we kept that in our hand. And we can always put our otter out of range of any burn spells the opponent might follow up with. They do have a steam clean. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, which is the adventure side of the Scolding Viper. And there is our red mana. All right, we're going to try and set ourselves up for a uh, win over the next few turns. We'll drop the Kamano now. And then I guess to be as mana efficient as possible, we'll play our Elusive Otter as a 1-1. Uh, next turn, we have the option of playing the Frolicking Familiar or the Monastery Swift Spear. Kind of with a Scolding Viper. Okay, so pretty bad for our deck. It's going to punish... Any spell we cast that cast that costs uh, three or less, and every single spell in our deck does, we would take a damage. So I think the most aggressive play is to actually play the Frolicking Familiar um, as a 2-2, which comes out as a 3-3 because of the Commando's trigger. This will enable us to do maximum damage next turn. Here we find another Commando. All right, well, we can do a fair bit of damage in a, to our opponent. I don't care if they block the uh, etching of Kamano with their Scolding Viper. So I'm going to give them the option to block that. Targeting our Elusive Otter with our Monstrous Rage. That puts it out of range of opponent's um, blocker. So they can block our 2-2. I guess we could Giant Growth it in response if we wanted to, to save the etching. But they didn't block at all, so we'll just cast Giant Growth. I don't think it matters what we target. They could have a Bounce spell. Okay, they take everything. They go down to two, and we actually have two damage in our hand with the Kamano faces Kakazan and the Adventure side of Frolicking Familiar. So I can't see us losing from this point. Opponent with two combat researches onto their Scolding Viper. And they get in there for two damage. Draw a couple of cards. So yeah, keeping a one-land has worked well in this particular game. Okay, they've 
They found a Brotherhood's End. It's got to be nice for them, but... I'm just going to play this Swift Spear and attack our opponent this way to make sure that we have a um, another point of damage on the battlefield that they need to deal with. Could have played, obviously, the Kamano there. I think what we did is absolutely fine, and it's Cathartic Fire. Destroys our Swift Spear. They do find a Chrome Host uh, Sea Shark, but we have a Kamano here, which should do the damage. And even if they counter this, we can um, use the Frolicking Familiar to finish them off. And a uh, nice little win there against a Is It deck. All right, on the draw here. Um, uh, I don't think we can keep that one. We don't actually have a turn one play. This one, not so bad. What to put away though? I guess we put away the island as it's a little bit redundant in our hand. Okay, we find a, another land, which is great. Anyway, we'll drop the Kamano and opponent with Rafine's Tower. So, a pretty slow start for us here. No turn one creatures, but we do have our Swift Spear now, which we will drop. And it will come out as a 2 3, or will it? Okay, it's Essence Scatter. Ooh, that's really annoying. Um, I don't know why, I just didn't expect a counter spell then, but so be it. Opponent with a Spellbook Vendor. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay one to attach a Sorcerer Roll token to a creature you control. So they now have a 3-3. Three, three. And Kamano becomes the etching of Kamano as a 2-2. Two, two. I'm not blocking with this, so I'm going to attack, and I will be happy to trade if they want to do that. Okay, and... Uh, just going to make our creature a 5-3 to get some damage through as we do have our Royal Truman in our hand if we need to protect it. And they have a Spiteful Hex Mage. 3-2 creates a Curse Roll token attached to a target creature you control. So they attach it to the Hex Mage. The Vendor triggers to create a Sorcerer token which goes onto the Hex Mage. And that overrides the Curse token. So nice little combo the opponent there has between the Vendor and the Hex Mage. Hex Mage sounds like a card. I should be playing with. But we do find an Otter. We don't have our blue land. We uh, bottoms that during the Mulligan. So I guess we'll use the Elusive Otter's Groves Bounty Sorcery here to uh, throw some counters onto our etching. Make sure that we keep Royal Treatment in uh, response. Another counter spell. Okay, target non uh, counter target non creature spell, create two treasures. All right, well, we've been gotten with a couple of counter spells in this deck. In uh, this game, sorry. So, kind of an annoying game here. Spellbook triggers. They aren't going to, obviously, create any more sorcery tokens as they already have them. But as Hex Mage attacks, they are going to scry. Well, we'll let that go for the minute. Take our turn, and it's Reckless Impulse. And we will impulsively cast that. So we find a Swift Spear and a Kamano. We'll play a Kamano. It resolves. I'm wary about playing this Swift Spear. Let's, um, not. I want to get rid of this vendor. So unfortunately, they can't have two monster, monster token rolls. So, um,. We do lose our creature, but we have a follow-up with the Swift Spear, which we could cast now or cast it next turn as a 2-3, which I think is better. We will wait. Opponent gets in there with their 4 free and scries once to the top. Another Swift Spear, okay. Well, we'll cast the one from Exile first. And that resolves, nice. Uh, I guess we'll cast the other one as well. Attack our opponent to eight. Doesn't look like they've got any removal or counter spells. And they opt not to attack this turn. As we just draw a ship and reef. Pretty much any spell would have been cool for us then. Um, we haven't really got an attack. We have with one of the swift spears. 
but we need to try and find a way to win this game. They do block the uh, Swift Spear. That's it. I presume they would, and we're just going to put the uh, Royal... Oh, okay, they negate it anyway, so... That's a shame. Ah, uh, they have Heroes Downfall anyway, alright. So, uh, they go down to four. They do have an attacker, so loads of removal, loads of counter magic by our opponent, but we've got them down to four life. Okay, the end. So they're going to search our uh, hand, deck, and graveyard for copies of Monastery Swift Spear and exile them. Just the one to exile from our deck. Yeah, this has been a tough game. Okay, there's a giant growth. Do they block? Let's see. Okay, they do block. We get to save our creature. Oh, please, not another one. <laughs> not for you, can't refuse. Okay, they've come prepared here. I thought we might have had them then. All this treasure, nothing to do with it. We do have a um, an X-Cost spell attached to one of our otters. We'll play Reckless Impulse. There's a Follicking Familiar, so that's one damage to our opponent's face. Problem is, if they counter this, then we lose our um, creature, but I want to get that down this turn if possible. So, I guess we ping our opponent. Drop them down to three, and yeah, we've got to cast this now so we can attack with it next turn. Very close game here against this Esper deck. Okay, resolves. I really wish this giant growth was a... A hexproof spell, as the opponent has the end to uh, exile that. So we've lost all of our monastery swift spears, all of our um, three cost otters. Opponent's gonna get in there, knock us down to one. I mean, lightning strike is an out if they don't have a counter spell. We're gonna get a redraw if this. Uh, Oh my days. So definitely my problem there for not tapping properly, but answer me why Arena decided to prioritize my pain land over the treasure I had available there. All right, on the draw. <laughs> Bit of a crazy hand. I guess the nine damage in our hand with the lightning strikes makes this kind of keepable, but we'll see how we get on here. Um, there's a Swift Spear, alright, well, I guess we play the Swift Spear, we'll see they might have a counter spell, they have played two islands so far, but what are we going to do? Okay, mate disappear, fair enough. I guess we could have gone for the Storm Chaser Drake that turn, and then if they'd mate disappeared, the following turn we could have played our Swift Spear with Lightning Strike as well, but I actually feel like the Drake might be better to have on the battlefield. They did tap out and we did find a giant growth so we will play our Storm Chaser Drake. Their Thran Spider hit does have reach though so I've got to be a little bit careful of that but with the giant growth in our hand we might be able to ambush the creature of theirs. They are having a good look at our Drake. I've always been an admirer of this card the uh, Drake. Obviously it kind of fits in the Ivy style deck or a deck, a deck with enchantments but we needed some card draw in here, and I think this kind of works pretty well. Put it with the Celestus. So it looks like it's maybe on blue artifacts. And it will pass our turn, and there's Royal Treatment, which is great because it gives Hexproof exactly what we needed. Okay, so I'm going to just fire off Giant Growth onto our Drake. Pump the Drake to a 5 power creature. Also draw a card. There's Kamano, alright. So we're starting to get the tools available now to find a way to maybe do something about winning this game. Opponent can't block. Fading Hope, well I'm going to absolutely give a royal treatment to my Drake. Gives it Hexproof, it also pumps its power slightly. It's now a 6-5 and it now has a Ward 1. We found a Frolic in Familiar, so I'm going to play our Kamano Kakazan. And uh, whilst they're kind of tapped out, I'm just going to ping them in the face with Blow Off Steam, the Follicum Familiar's 
adventure. I didn't want them to counter that because I didn't really want them to counter the whole card. Obviously with adventure cards, if um, the adventure side is countered or any targets um, are fizzled, then the whole card goes to the graveyard. Opponent with Blue Sun's Twilight steals our Drake. Okay. Okay, and our Kamano um, now gives an extra counter. And we found a Swift Spear. Sorry, Frolicking Familiar. You're going to have to wait another turn. Um, it's going to get busy with these Lightning Strikes. Pop the opponent down to six. So we have um, Lethal in our hand now, next turn. No matter what they want to do with our Swift Spear. So, a little bit too aggressive for our opponent here. They do attack, though, with the Drake, which is... Um, I feel a little bit ambitious on their behalf, especially as uh, they're kind of on the defensive and our Kamano is going to become a 2-2. They find a Mirror Shell Crab. It taps them out. We have two Lightning Strikes in our hand and a uh, nice little victory here against uh, Blue Artifacts. All right, on the play here. Um, pretty nice hand. Looking for a blue banner for the uh, Drake here. We will attack our opponent with the Swiss Spear. Put him down to 19. And it's a Plaza of Heroes. Okay, well, I think in this particular deck, I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to shoot them in the face and uh, get busy. Get as much damage through as possible early on before they find some blockers and then we need to start getting clever with flyers and find an otter. Next turn we will be reckless impulsing. Ambitious farmhand, okay. So this is the kind of deck that I feel like the elusive otter, if we can find it, is perfect in. Okay, monstrous rage will give trample, but let's play reckless impulse first, see what we can find. Okay, it is a, another mountain and another swift spear. I think, I think we'll just do that now whilst we have the opportunity to hit our opponent for three. See if they want to block, which they do, which they don't. They go down to 11. Looking for royal treatment, I think, to um, help protect us if they do have a wandering emperor. But opponent with a crystal grotto. Um, with the Plaza of Heroes, it does suggest they're maybe a legend style deck but only seen the uh, one white mana and a ambitious farmhand so far. Monstrous Rage gives Trample though, and I'd love to get this uh, Storm Chaser Drake down. Shrouded Shepherd enters the battlefield, a target creature you control gets plus two, plus two into end of turn. Okay, they give it to the farmhand, but they don't attack with it. But we did find a blue mana, which is Sweet. We can also attack with our Sock and Zans if we wanted to. I think I'd love to make sure I get this Storm Chaser Drake down onto the battlefield this turn. It is an instant, the Monstrous Rage, so we will attack. We will see what they want to do. Okay, they go for the block. They go for the double block. All right. Um, okay, so we can just uh, Monstrous Rage our Swift Spear here. Make it a 5-4. It's actually going to survive the attack. Kill both the opponent's creatures. They go down to seven. And then we'll follow up with the Drake. Obviously, we're susceptible now to a Wandering Emperor, Board Wipe, but we've managed to get them down to seven, which is pretty cool. They do find their fourth mana, though, so fingers crossed it's just a, a creature they have. Glissa, Sunslayer, and there is a Monstrous Rage. So, I'm gonna target the Drake to enable us to draw a card and it's a Kamano we'll play Kamano enable prowess and that should be enough as we can definitely get through at least seven damage no matter how they block so nice little win there against a I want to say a legends deck but really not too sure okay so finally the opponent is going to accept their fate as the damage goes through even though we had to wait right to the end of the rope there.